someone go turn the power on? What's up, ladies and gents? Excalizor is here, bringing you some from the desk of Excal, and let me talk to you. And today, what we're going to be talking about is your boy Bruce has had enough, and he can't stand the modern cod anymore. It's over. It's done. I'm finished with this series as it stands. And before we get into that, I do just want to briefly mention that uh, I I've been a dummy, and... Well, for more reasons than one, but uh, I have tried to record multiple sessions of the classic COD multiplayer that I've been having over the past few months here, and somehow, some way, every time I've tried recording something for one matter or another, it's gone wrong, and so I do apologize for that. So hopefully, an audible into some classic COD zombies is acceptable. I mean, this is my favorite zombies map of all time. Duris, that eyes at that Issa, however. You, however you pronounce it, this shit's my jam, so hopefully we're all cool with that. But, uh, yeah, anyway, moving on. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with the modern COD. I've, COD, called COD. I've had all I can stand, and I can, I can stand no more. And quite frankly, I'm surprised it's, it's taken me this long to, to finally put my foot down on this franchise, because I, I haven't really been happy with it been in a long time, just to be quite blunt with it. Uh, the last time I really had fun with the multiplayer was Black Ops 4, and it's crazy to say this out loud, but man, that was five years ago. And now we've got a new one coming out in just a few hours here, and I think I've, I've made a decision, I've said it multiple times on stream, it's like, I ain't playing, I didn't even play the beta, and now I, I, gotta, I gotta make a video about it and talk about it, go, go a little bit more in depth about, you know, why I think the way I do, and so on and so forth, and, you know, I guess, you know, just to be, <laughs> alright, so hold on, we're probably going to be doing this a lot over the course of this video, so to reference an experience that happened when I was playing the Modern Warfare 2019 beta for the very first time, day one, day zero, however you want to call it, is uh, about a couple hours in, I remember, there was, uh, there was a comment on stream that I I really should have taken the heart a lot more at the time, but I'm stubborn, and uh, <laughs> I didn't think it'd last this long, I guess, but the comment was something along the lines of, you know, wow, Bruce sure is quiet. He must be fucking miserable right now, and yeah, he was right. <laughs> he absolutely was right, and that pretty much sums up Every time I've played a Call of Duty since then, I mean, there's there's been some fun here and there, you know, in Warzone and Caldera, and uh, well, certainly no fun to be had in Warzone 2.0 outside of the first day when nobody knew what was going on. But people learned real quick how to how to really take all the fun out of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and Cold War was probably the most tolerable, but that was only one game mode, combined arms, and with one weapon, the stoner, and I mean, that only lasted about a month before, you know, that the novelty of even that wore off, so, and you know, it, it's really driving home, you know, how miserable I've been with this franchise, now that I've I've spent you know a couple weekends here and there over the past two or three months or whatever playing old Black Ops One on the 360, and you know, in spite of how terrible I am on the sticks now, and you know that mechanical skill is long gone. I'll never get that back without like a month straight of practice, and that's just that just ain't happening. <laughs> and you know, I mean I do I do okay I guess in the grand scheme of things. You know even with you know not being able to perform quite like how I'd want to. I guess, you know, over the course of the night, I can still manage probably close to a 2 KD over a night before the alcohol really starts to kick in. But, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, I, I get my ass kicked. I straight up do. I mean, I stun myself more often than I, I care to admit. Uh, <laughs> I certainly can't aim long distance. And uh, you know the the man the man with the ghost silencer. I I mean I had trouble with that back in the day, and now it's I mean it's I'm I'm a free blackbird. You know that that that's where I stand skill wise. To be straight up with you, and uh, in spite of all of that, it's the most fun I've had playing a COD multiplayer since Black Ops 4. You know to be being as terrible as I am, and so on and so forth. 
I'm still having fun with it, and it's just not something I get for modern COD anymore, and it hasn't been that way for a long time, and it's a it's a damn shame, too, because, I mean, I've purchased every single Call of Duty since coming back to this franchise since COD 4. You know, I played COD 1, got addicted to World of Warcraft, didn't really get to play 2. I mean, I heard it looks pretty good. Heard it's pretty good, but I'll, I'll have to take the people's word for that. Uh, COD 3, well, I'm... I don't think many people played that, and honestly, I played the single player, and uh, that's probably for the best. <laughs> but yeah, I've I've purchased every COD since COD 4, and you know, I guess it's you know it's kind of sad, really, to see what what the franchise has become with you know all the the microtransactions and the algorithm and the abhorrent state of aim assist and all that. And it's just it's ridiculous. But yeah, it's so. One of the, I guess I'll go over, you know, a couple of the main reasons why I just don't like the franchise anymore, then we'll call it a video. So I guess the, you know, when you talk about stuff like this, you can't, you can't not start off with the algorithm-based matchmaking. Whether you believe in the skill-based matchmaking or the uh, engagement-oriented matchmaking, you know, there's an algorithm involved and I don't like it. So if you, if you want to believe that it's skill-based matchmaking, I mean, that that's cool and all. But in my experience, I mean, I can I can tell who's going to win the game within the first two minutes 90% of the time. Like, if I'm just playing by myself, I mean, you, you can tell with about probably 90% accuracy. And if the games are like that, it's not really, not really, uh, <laughs> not really skill-based matchmaking in it for my money. And... I mean, it's, you know, when the games are like that, it's, you know, and especially for a player like me, you know, I like to use the goofy weapons, I like to use the, I like to, you know, get get the camos, you know, go for Dark Matter, go for Diamond, you know, whatever they call it, Obsidian, Platinum, you know, whatever goofy shit they call it these days. You know, I like, I like doing that stuff. You know, I've, al I've always been about variety in my gameplay, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's as much as we all like the dual scorpions, you know, it, it's not something that you can use against, you know, every lobby that you're in. I mean, you know, that's, there's obvious, you know, weaknesses to it, and th those weaknesses are easy to exploit, right? You know, that, that's the kind of shit that I like to do. But with the algorithm-based matchmaking, I mean, using du imagine if there is the matchmaking of today in the Black Ops 1 of yesterday, and... <laughs> Try and tell me how much fun you'd have when everyone is using a ghost FAMAS. I mean, th there's there's no shot. Dual Scorpion, no matter how good you are, will not stand a chance in lobbies like though. I mean, unless you want to hug tight corners, which you know, someone like me, it, it's just not gonna not gonna happen. Be better off using something else, right? And so I, I know people, you know, like the counterpoint to us, you just want easier matches. And yeah, there there is a level of truth to that. There certainly is. I don't want to sweat my balls off day day in and day out just for a casual multiplayer game. Let's call it what it is. Call it as a casual multiplayer game. And <laughs> like I'll never I'll never forget this. Like my first match of COD Vanguard. I don't know, I booted it up like, you know, I don't know, 12, 14, 16 hours after, you know, the midnight launch or whatever. And my very first match, I got put into a lobby with people who had been playing, you know, all day, all night, God bless them, you know, high 30s, low 40s and all that. So I'm playing my very first match in a brand new game. I'm playing against people who've got some relevant perks. They've leveled up their guns. So, you know, they have guns with attachments. And remember, Vanguard had 10 attachments per gun, I mean, and each attachment makes a goddamn difference, right? And to make matters even worse, if they if people were pre-ordering, and there were definitely a couple of pre-order boys in, in the lobbies those days, they had the busted STG blueprint, which had the one of the perks I think was called Vital, which essentially gave it stopping power. It was the headshot multiplier to the upper chest area, and. You know, if you combine that with the state of modern aim assist, and, I mean, no one's playing on a fucking mouse and keyboard these days anymore on COD, and why would you? And, yeah, so, you know, so already, my very first match, and, and the deck is already stacked against me, 
and I mean it, it's just a miserable experience. <laughs> like, look, I've played against absolute killers. I've played against you know Dougie and TP and Shroud and Formal and guys like that. You know, in in H1Z1 and in blackout tournaments, money making tournaments. And I would rather play in those lobbies with no money on the line at all. You know, j just to have you know a straight up competition. I'd do that for free over playing a standard multiplayer modern Call of Duty for an hour. Like, play, play, the, the blackout tournament that I played in where Sandy and I won, you know, 3,600 each, that was easier than going through a modern multiplayer session. It really was. And, I mean, not to say that it was easy because, you know, that that was the uh, the back and forth matches we had with Dougie and TP, and that stuff was intense. I think I may have the VOD posted on my second channel if anyone's curious as to how that turned out, but uh, I gotta say, you know, that was that was probably the best I've ever played in a competitive scenario, you know, going back to the Battlefield 42 and uh, Battlefield Vietnam days. It, it's one of my best showings ever, I think. And, you know, your boy came home a little bit richer with, with, with a wallet a little bit fatter, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the modern algorithm with, you know, the kind of player that I am, the, the kind of things that I like to do in games like these, it's just, you know, it's 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 anti-me. <laughs> you know, be a little uh, egotistic about it, I guess. So, yeah, moving on. You know, that algorithm, whatever matchmaking it is, it stinks. I don't like it. So, I mean, uh, the second thing that really makes this franchise hard to enjoy is just the absolute state of aim assist. And I'm sh I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. And try, you know, the irony is not lost on me. But, but Bruce, you've been playing COD on the sticks lately. And yeah, I have. But it's old COD with old aim assist. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, you know what? I don't remember... <laughs> Amos is doing some of the things that it's been doing for me, even on Black Ops 1. But I tell you what, that aim sure ain't sticking. It sure as hell ain't turning for me. Because uh, one of the first things I learned real, relearned real quick in the Black Ops 1 is uh, my, I can't find the right sensitivity. Like, either it turns too fast for me or it turns too slow. And then I remember, wait, you can just panic knife, dummy. And all right, well, that solves that issue. But all right, anyway. I mean, it's just, you know, with, with uh, you know, the people that I follow on my Twitter is, um, you know, I see one or two of these clips at, at, at least, you know, at least one or two clips a week that's just like, I can't believe people put up with this stuff. Like, I mean, to be quite blunt about it, they like play, playing modern Call of Duty on a controller is the video game version of the participation trophy. <laughs> Like, like it, it's absurd. Like, you know, all these killers that you know that I've played against, you know, in day in days gone by, you know, just as little as you know, five, six, seven years ago, whatever. All of them, if they still play Call of Duty, has switched to a controller, and these are very, very capable mouse and keyboard players. I mean, you even you even see it in Apex. Like every, like even if it's a it's a you know a mouse and keyboard PC team, I think you know the way they have to structure their teams for that game in Apex competitive apex is one guy has to be on a controller otherwise you can't compete I, I mean, that's fucked up and plus like you know over the years i've seen some real cornball fucking <laughs> strategies or, or i don't even i don't even know how to really describe them but uh let's go back to black ops 4 competitive on the console i remember there was a there was a brief period. I do think they eventually patched it out. I remember just laughing my ass off when I learned about it. Is um <laughs> so like whenever you would go into like eighty like normally when you play COD, right? You see a guy, yeah, you blast him away, right? But the strategy in Black Ops 4 on the sticks was that you zoom in and out, in and out, in and out like this because, you know, for those couple of frames that you're zooming, you're zooming in and zooming out is when aim assist is at its strongest. So, I mean, you can you can look it up there. I'm sure there's YouTube videos out there, you know, COD pros doing that. And it's, it was just the, go the goofiest look at that. I mean, imagine you, you're playing a game and it looks like this. Like, what the fuck are we doing? I think I remember memeing on it for a couple of matches on the on the multiplayer PC, you know, trying trying to aim like that, being all being all goofy, and it's like really that that's the, that's that's the state it's in, huh? Trying to get as most the most aim assist possible, huh? All right, yeah, real uh, 
Real, uh, real, real honorable competitive integrity right there, huh? And then with Vanguard, oh, this this is one of my favorites too. So you know you'd have people playing S and D or Hardline or Dom or you know whatever objective-based mode, and they, they they would actually be people like aiming through aiming at walls to see if like aim assist would tug to reveal a player's location. And I mean that's really nothing new. With, with this franchise on console, like even on Black Ops 1, I mean, it's one of the things that blew me away. Is like, I've definitely felt aim assist a tugging, you know, through giant rocks and buildings and concrete walls and all that. I was like, man, was it always this strong? I mean, Jesus. But, you know, to see people actively looking for it in, in what's the purported to be a competitive environment, what a joke. <laughs> so. I mean, yeah, the aim assist is just absurd. Um, I'll probably link, you know, one of my favorite graphs ever to, you know, really drive drive this home is the Halo graph of, like, the top percentile of players and their accuracy on console versus the mouse and keyboard. And it pretty much, it, it checks out with my experience. And it's like, you know, modern aim assist is just heads and shoulders above what the majority of mouse and keyboard players are capable of. You know, and <laughs> I mean you know, for for my for my, you know, I'm not the best. Never have been, never will be. But I've always thought I'm pretty capable. But like, you know, even playing against like an average Joe in like Warzone, Caldera, or whatever, like it is one hundred percent on me to be perfect. If I if I don't hit every single shot, like I'm dead. And you know nothing like <laughs> nothing really you know drives this home too. So like you know the, those those clips you know, I see on the Twitter you know every week. Nothing is ever more obvious than you know if you know what to look for you can't unsee it. But once you see it, I mean it's pretty blatant. Like with the modern aim assist, a lot of the times you'll see you know you know perfect 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 aim, and then all 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 the, all the sudden, ugh. The real aim shows, like his real input shows up, like the aim is so sticky, right? So just imagine, you know, perfect tracking, perfect tracking, perfect tracking. You kill, oh, and then, you know, his aim, well, probably not that extreme. His sensitivity would have to be like at 20 or whatever, but yeah, that's that's the uh, that, that's the state of that. It's like, how, how can I compete with that? It's, it's essentially a legal aimbot, and... I mean, you know, if we had seen these kill cams, you know, back in 2010, 2011, 2012, or whatever, I mean, it'd be the easiest, easiest thing to call out as, you know, bullshit hacker, aimbot, and all that. And now, nowadays, it's just the norm too. And I mean, to make matters even worse, because it's so, it's so normal, I think it's, you know, it's easier now than ever to like actually, you know, cheat and get away with it for a long time. I've definitely heard of uh, you know a lot of these uh, you know quote unquote war zone pros you know there are a dime a dozen these days and quite a few of them have gotten busted over the years so there's that to contend with too. <laughs> and you got people on Overwatch console using using Zim fours and you know th th this weird strategy of like using a controller with your left hand and a mouse with with your right hand. It's like I. That's just that's just the state of it. It's it's crazy to me, and you know that's it's the second biggest reason why I, I can't stand the modern COD anymore. And I guess to cap it all off, too, you know, I mean the obvious, you know, the microtransactions. I mean, it just seems these days they're really more focused on ways to, you know, try to get you to spend as much time on the game as possible, uh, you know, shoving microtransactions down your face. Um, you know, it's crazy to me that, like, you know, back in the day, with, you know, let's go back to Advanced Warfare with um, their loot boxes and their variants. And Advanced Warfare, I think Sledgehammer made that game, and they got a lot of shit for that, and rightfully so. And I'm still a little butthurt about that because I never, I never got to unlock the uh, the Battle Obsidian Steed. I always wanted to try it. And, you know, it's just picking it up off the ground just doesn't cut it. But yeah, I mean, the variants in that game were nuts. Meta changing, game break, and all that, you know, the HBR Insanity, the ARX Hole Puncher. Uh, one of the LMGs was called, like, the Heavy. I just don't remember what the LMG was called. You know, so on and so forth. And they got a lot of shit for that, right? 
you know, hiding, you know, metal weapons behind a potential paywall, right? I mean, yeah, you you got you you can earn crates naturally through gameplay, but of course, you know, you want to open your checkbook, you can you know, <laughs> gamble your way to the top, so to say, right? And now you fat you fast forward to the modern day. You know we've we've got these goofy battle passes. We get seasons. Every season comes with two new guns. These two new guns also conveniently <laughs> become meta. Usually, I mean, how many times in Warzone did the, the the assault rifle meta change from season to season? New gun comes out, new meta, a couple of nerfs. Oh hey, conveniently, if you go over to the store, they've got it. They've got a variant for sale for the low, low price of twenty or twenty-five dollars, and it has a sixty percent of the relevant attachments you'll need, right off the rip. And <laughs> apparently, the, their long-term strategy here is look, just keep doing the dirtbag thing that everyone hates. But you know, if you, if you make it normal, then people will just seemingly forget about it. And then, really, too, one of the one of the most insulting things, too, on my time playing Warzone was the uh, the pay-to-win skins. Like, I don't know what it is with the, with these modern shooters and their, I don't know, just like intrinsic desire to want to make things as hard as possible to see, make the colors as dull and drab as possible. And when it comes to a shooter, like visibility should be. I mean, it, it shouldn't be an issue. You know, you should be able to easily see anything and everything that's moving. Things, like, players should not be blending in, right? I, th I think that's fair. You know, I, I yearn for the days of the, of the Christmas lights on every character that was in Black Ops 4. And I remember, I remember one patch, I don't know if it was intentional or not, that they took those lights away and everyone was freaking out. And rightfully so, couldn't see shit anymore. And then, you know, fast forward to Caldera, and, you know, the map is the map is dark. You know, there's a lot of shadows, there's a lot of brown, there's a lot of dark spots. Oh, hey, conveniently, there's the rose skin for $20. Wearing a, wearing a black wetsuit with, like, a purple visor. Blends in perfectly with 70% with of the map. And, you know, as, as a mouse and keyboard player who definitely has less than perfect aim, I can't see that shit. It's hard to track. And they and they they sold that and like eventually a forty dollar variant of that skin that every every sweaty dork was using. So yeah, you know the microtransactions, we got the pay to win elements, the algorithm based matchmaking, the absurd state of aim assist, and before anyone says you know you know just turn off crossplay, that doesn't help on PC. It doesn't because it's not it's not going to stop anyone from plugging a, a controller on PC. I mean, there, there's no input-based matchmaking in Call of Duty. And even, if, even if there was, I probably still wouldn't play because, you know, there's so much else wrong with this franchise for, for mine own peepers, as I've been yapping about for however long we've been talking now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much, pretty much the state of it. it. It's sad to see what this franchise has become. I mean... <laughs> You know, I, I love a good Wings quote, you know, the Call of Duty ruined my life, but, you know, to be quite honest with you, you know, Call of Duty changed my life, you know, through this franchise and, you know, blowing up with COD 4 and, you know, the old school COD on YouTube, you know, that's, it's how I put food on the table or roof over my head for the past 12 years now, and, you know, luckily I don't need COD anymore, I haven't needed COD in a long time, thankfully, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Can you imagine playing a game you hate day in and day out to try and make a living? Yikes, dude. But yeah, it's you know I guess it's really really the end end of an era, you know, to come to this realization that you know COD just it just ain't it anymore. And you know to like another thing I find amazing is you know the the 3,000 dev numbers. I get I get a kick out of that. Like 3,000 devs to make Modern Warfare 2 to do what? Like COD 4 redefined an entire genre, you know, back in what did it come out 2008, 2007, you know, for 15, 16 years, you know, that the dev team size for COD 4 was like 64 people, with just a, a hand a handful of people really redefined an entire genre that we're still feeling a decade and a half later, and then 3,000 devs. To do what? 
I don't know, re render photorealistic grass and beards and stupid fucking microtransaction charms that no one can realistically ever really see. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? So, all right, that probably ended up being a, a little rambly. I do apologize. Uh, we also are live to tape because of the issues I've had trying to record. Just, you know, <laughs> my multiplayer session. But, you know, we do what we do. Hopefully it turned out okay. So, uh, all right. I think with that, there's only one thing to do, and that's to commit dishonorable Sudoku. So, wherever you may be, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we're out of here with everybody saying, Peace!